championships in the sprint race. Is it going to stay that way? Ninth position now for Vitkova. She's starting to tire. I don't think there's anything left to give for Vitkova. Glazarina comes in to put another Russian into the top 15. And at the moment, they have Zaitseva in four, Vilikina in five. And then uh, Glazarina is the third best of the Russians in 15th place. Another team to watch out for in the women's relay. France, certainly. Norway, you can never quite rule them out with Tora Berger on the last leg. I think Zaitseva, look at the times there, Zaitseva. What is it, less than two seconds off the podium? I thought she was going to certainly get on the podium today. Well, it's not over quite yet. We're only through to starter number 88. Of course, Daria Ulova. Looking at the uh, last group, Mike, I think uh, Anne Christine Flatland, who starts number 93, could do something. Uh, and then I can't see anyone outside that who's going to challenge. Be nice to see uh, Aita Gasparin, the youngest of the three sisters, who starts number 110. And then Itsuka Awada will be the last away, number 115 for Japan. You mentioned Flatland, uh, start number 93. She's starting very soon, I think. And I hope that she can throw a surprise here. She's not the favourite of the Norwegians. But uh, certainly her form and from what I've heard in her preparations coming into here, she's been improving. Vera missing one, uh, 110 behind the Italian. The Italian team are good. Andrea Zingerli has really given the Italian team spirit. Gwizdon, look at her time. And that's with one penalty in the prone. She could have won this one. Oh, she might still do that. Oh! she might have done had that last target gone down oh. what a shame she showed us what sort of form she was on in the mix relay skiing incredibly fast and uh, her time Mike would have been about 10 seconds outside the best she certainly could have challenged Tora Berger for the silver medal and I think she would have been comfortably inside Shamirienko for that bronze medal Still at the finish, so there's been a lot of finishers. And Amanda Lightfoot, uh, she always seems to hit her best form at World Championships. At the moment, the British athlete, Amanda Lightfoot, she's at 30th position, only 2.25 behind. The French, uh, Mike, uh, what do you read into the fact that their shooting has been below their normal, very high standard today? I've been very surprised by that. Uh, Doran Abel missing two in the standing. It's unusual. Brunet missing one in the standing. That's also unusual. Last year, they were hitting 10 out of 10 in this race. I think it's pressure when your expectations are to to get yourself on a podium the pressure then multiplies you you feel the importance we saw it with beyond Dallin earlier this morning the, the importance of the last shot the shot that you begin to doubt yourself or even think about as soon as you start thinking it's over Vitkova into her last 100 meters now it's been a very good race for her but just found uh, that the engine didn't have the power of the last two kilometers if she can stay in the top 10 that would be a sensational run for her and she's just going to do it ninth position 50 seconds behind a great effort from Vitkova she has shot the perfect score uh, and, and in a way Mike that can be a little bit depressing when you're still 50 seconds behind having shot uh, so well 50.6 seconds it's it's not a huge ask she was a later starter or well, bib number 50 we're also trying to track Sukalova on her last lap. Look at the fans. Well, there's Russian flags in there. Of course, there's Norwegian flags, many multi flags, but the majority, of course, are for the Czech Republic. Well, they could have two. It is quite possible they'll have two top 10 finishes today, which is uh, more than satisfactory. And Ace Biscon. Can she show us how it should be done? No, she suffered as well. Uh, an email coming in from the Lebanon, Mike, saying what's happened to the German performances? Well below par, shooting worse than usual, and uh, certainly the men this morning not skiing up to their usual standard. I can't explain it. The, the, of course, the German women's team has, take, has taken a little dip. The best at the moment of the finish is Gusner in sixth, and then we go all the way down to 21st to find Henkel. So I would agree their performances are, have been disappointing, and it's all over the press in Germany saying, 
saying, hey, what's happening to our biathletes? We want results. Well, here's Shukulova, whose parents are both uh, athletes. In fact, a mother, a former biathlete, and a successful one at that. And uh, she showed us what sort of form uh, she can produce just after Christmas. Top 10, I think, possible still. Five kilos. Welcome back, just uh, in time to see the collapsed figure of Sukulova, who has just finished. She's gone into the top 10, 50 seconds off the pace. Had she hit all the targets, she was certainly looking at a possible medal. But uh, fourth place, I think, would have been more likely. She's uh, very, very strong in the shorter distance. You think maybe just needs, uh, what is it, more years or maybe the, the lack of training the fact that she missed training throughout the summer has cost her I think it is a factor, of course nothing a margin of, uh, what is it, Sokolova 56.9, it's, it's not a lot uh, she did miss one target so you're talking a margin of only 30 seconds over this distance it's doable, but you're right, she missed a lot of training and over Christmas as well Sokolova missed uh, prime training during that period and, and there is payback later for that, if you don't keep the training going you just drop your form by even half a percent, and that's uh, your 30 seconds. Two Shemirienkos in the top 15, two Czechs in the top 10 at the moment, but no change with the top three. Patricia of Ukraine in the gold medal position at the moment. Tora Berger of Norway once again produces a podium performance in second place, and Vita Shemirienko of Ukraine in third. The two Ukrainians on the podium, both shooting 10 out of 10. Zaitseva still in fourth. She started early and shot 9 out of 10, only 24 seconds off the pace. She knows if that last target had gone down, she would have challenged for the gold medal. Nadine Horschler, you would normally predict she would get these five standings. She's normally that good, but again, it's the World Championships. I'm just wondering on form, Mike, she seems to be struggling with the breathing. Uh, it wasn't the... the uh, normal recovery rate that we see from her and uh, that seems to have disturbed her rhythm in that standing shoot only two targets going down out of the five Gorekova shows us how it should be done and that will give her a boost for the first phase of this last two and a half kilometer loop if she is she going to challenge for a top 10 she might well do and uh, she could well beat uh, Kuzmina who is the number one ranked Slovak on the tour at the moment 31 outside eighth place that is a really good result and that's with one target missed. You can take away, what, 25 of those seconds. If she hit that, she would have been that much faster. But, but you can say that for so many of the biathletes today. Well, if you take 50 seconds off uh, Gwizdon's time, you get a gold medal winning performance. It's very strong indeed. And uh, she's one who could make advances in the pursuit. She's not renowned at the moment for her shooting, but five or six seasons ago, she was ranked number one in terms of shooting results for the whole season. So if she can find that sort of form with the rifle tomorrow, then uh, maybe she'll be one who moves up through the order. Uh, looking at the top 10 at the moment, Mike, uh, would your money be possibly be on Tora Berger for the win in the pursuit? She's so good in the pursuit. She's so very, very strong on the last shoot in the pursuit that, uh, yes, at the moment with uh, Pedrushna Berger, Vita Shemarenko, although the Zaitseva only 24 seconds behind. Well, there's the current leader. And uh, I think the gold medalist, uh, we're just having a look down the order for some of the later starters. No one is uh, challenging at the moment after the first shoot. Uh, the last late starter to do well. So Culliver, we know about. She's now finished, started number 54. And Ace Biscon, we've seen, started 66, but is down in, uh, in 14th position. And Shamilova of Russia started number 89, down in 18th position, nowhere near the time of the lead. Leaders. So Hild Hildebrand. Hildebrand, the time, it's what, it's some 20 seconds outside where she would like to be. Cameraman's confused with her shooting routine, but he's picked it up now. Not sure he's got the exposure quite right. That last shot was just below the middle, just on the edge of the nine ring. All five go down, that's really what uh, counts. And the time margin will be at least 21 seconds outside the leaders. 
some of that will be due to the conditions. It's getting a little colder, down to minus seven at the moment. And uh, if it gets any colder than that, the, slow, the snow really will slow up. It will. I'm just as uh, Hildebrand skis out, I'm just thinking, Pedrushina, what a day to perform, your, to give your best ever result in World Cup or World Champion. She's only had a second place. In fact, twice she's been second place. And they were both this year. She's having the season of her life. Nawawa Koska, the Polish team have picked up and uh, largely due to their coaching, they've reduced the bulk hours they used to do. They've concentrated more on, on speed work, more specific training instead of the endless huge hours they used to do. And they're all sparking much, much, much better with that reduction in massive hours. Pedrushna, Shemarenko and Berger looking safe. Well, that's after the second shoot. Just trying to see where Flatland is. Well, Flatland's 18.5 seconds off the pace after the first shoot. She shot five out of five. Bichon, take away those two penalties. And uh, again, another of the French athletes not performing so well in the range today. As far as my calculations make it, make it uh, we've got nine so far of the 66 finishers who've hit the perfect 10. So it's not an easy day. I thought maybe we'd have 15 athletes hitting 10 out of 10. At the moment, it's nine. already a minute off the pace of the leaders but she did well on the prone just showing a little lack of experience at this level taking in extra five or six seconds to prepare for the shoot but if they all go down now that was uh, good drills from Gashono because Mina could take note Five out of five again, so the perfect shoot for Gashono. That might well be good enough to put her into the top 60, which will mean she gets a run out in the pursuit tomorrow. All those outside the top 60 get a day off and can start thinking about uh, the individual race. Landover, two checks already in the top 10 positions. Unlucky to be starting so late on. Well, you have to respect that performance, Mike. Uh, the Czechs, uh, they've competed here in this stadium many times, but never in front of 20, 22,000 uh, fans, all cheering every shot that they take. And uh, we've seen many of the top nations, the Norwegians, the Germans, have all cracked under that sort of pressure. The Czechs have done themselves proud over the last three days. They have, and they're, they're landing of a Landova, <laughs> Landova, I should say, is, is a prime example of how the, the Czech Republic have, have shaped their athletes this year. She was 73rd last year in this race, missing two targets. I think she'll be a whole lot better than that today. And at 22-year-old, uh, uh, top 25 would be would be an 